Hey, I'm Doc North. In this video, I will be talking about Tartaglia and Hu Tao, the two upcoming rerun banners in the next patch. And a lot of people who don't have either of them seem to be conflicted on which character to pull. First of all, if you like either of them as characters, then you should just go for that character. But if you're watching this, I'm gonna assume you either don't care or that you like both of them and are confused. So Child and Hu Tao have a lot of similarities. They both do damage in a burst window. They have infusions and have a high damaging burst that can be multiplied even more by Vaporize for Tartaglia and Melter Vaporize for Hu Tao. I'll be going over the pros and cons of both of them and at the end it's going to be up to you to decide which cons you're okay to deal with and go for that character. So let's start with the pros of Tartaglia. Tartaglia is a on-field hydro enabler and kind of a replacement for Sing Cho, basically making him a on-field Sing Cho freeing up Sing Cho for another team. He has a high damaging burst. He also has Riptide, which is very strong against grouped enemies in a cluster. And Tartaglia teams overall have very high AoE damage. Both of his two popular teams have very high damage, first being Shangling, where he enables Vaporize for Shangling, and the second is with Beidou in an Electro Charge team where he enables Electro Charge for Beidou. Let's talk about some cons for Tartaglia. First of all, he has lower damage on his normal attacks compared to Hu Tao in his melee stance. His melee stance normal attacks aren't anything super extraordinary unless it's Riptide procs against a bunch of grouped enemies, which is only one chamber on the current Abyss floor, which is floor 12, chamber 1, first half. The Abyss difficulty recently has been through introducing bosses with millions of HP. This is why he's considered more as a on-field support slash DPS rather than a main DPS as in both of his popular strong teams, he's not the one doing most of the damage but it's instead Shangling or Beidou and he's supporting them. Tartaglia teams are a bit more expensive as you have to build him and another sub DPS like Shangling or Beidou as they will be the main source of damage with Tartaglia enabling them. Third is you need to manually stop his melee stance early yourself as if you stay on him for too long and then you rotate your team and go back to him, he's gonna be on cooldown and your rotation is gonna get messed up. Whereas for Hu Tao and other characters with a DPS burst window like Raiden Shao, etc the game it does it for them and kicks them out of their infusion or their stance so you don't have to manually keep count of the time. Another thing with Tartaglia is his E cooldown doesn't start when you go into melee stance but only after you end it or you switch to another character. Meaning his downtime is higher compared to characters like Hu Tao, Raiden and Xiao whose cooldown starts when their burst window opens, allowing them to stay on field and do damage while the timer ticks down, essentially lowering their downtime. So now let's talk about the pros of Hu Tao. Hu Tao is a pyro main DPS and she has, like Tartaglia, a very high damaging burst and she scales with HP. So all of those time pieces that you have with HP main stat with god tier substats can finally be used and any other artifact which has HP percentage is now going to be useful. As when you press E on Hu Tao, she converts a percentage of her HP to attack. A Hu Tao team is also very cheap to enable as Sing Cho is really the only support she needs. And he doesn't even need to be built. You just slap a lot of ER on him and you're good. Hu Tao will wave every single charge attack as long as she's covered by Sing Cho's burst. And her charge attacks hit like a truck and are her main source of damage. She also doesn't need to rely on Bennett as a support as her E gives her so much attack she doesn't need it as much as maybe some other characters. Obviously, the more attack, the better still, but it's not as important as some other characters. And also, Bandit heals her too fast, so there's that anti-synergy there. So if you're using a Hu Tao team, you're also freeing up Bennett, who is a very powerful support, and you can use Bennett in another team, where he will be more useful. She also has heal on her burst, probably one of the few or only DPS characters that can also heal themselves without using a specific weapon or anything. So there's that, she also has a sustain. Now let's talk about some of the cons for Hu Tao. The biggest problem for Hu Tao is her C1 is too good. It's a massive boost in damage as you no longer consume stamina when you do charge attacks, allowing you to dash cancel without worrying about running out of stamina and getting a lot more hits in in her burst window. 
Without that, charge attack dash cancel will consume too much stamina and instead you have to rely on jump cancels and not dash cancels. So if you're okay with that, then this is not really a problem. But if you don't like jump cancelling and find it awkward to play and it's not fun, and if you find it clunky, then this might be a deal breaker. Second, she is very strictly single target. She has very limited AoE on her burst. And yeah, you can pierce multiple enemies through and hit them with her dash, but it's very not consistent at all. She's very strong against one or two enemies or boss enemies with a lot of HP and she'll absolutely demolish boss enemies. But against a huge cluster of enemies is where she's going to struggle. And those are the pros and cons of both the characters and now it's up to you to decide which one you want to go for. If you have any disagreements with what I said or any corrections, you can leave them down below along with any other thoughts you have on these characters. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to sub to the channel. I would really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.